Alright guys, welcome to the game here. We are watching EMC versus Panza. The usual players are in and it turns out um, whoever we just casted, uh, who was that um, U-Boat, apparently had a lot of EMC members in it. That's why I recognize these names from Fishbone and uh, Wegamama and I don't know if any of the other players were in or not, but um, some of the heroes names are not quite correct here and that is because they uh some of these u players are using a lot of AKs which is very frustrating as a caster or as a viewer because it's hard for us to figure out who the heck is who so this guy has a face and uh, we don't actually know what his actual name is um but uh yeah it's kind of one of the one of the pet peeves about Dota players is that they change their names so often that it's really hard to track who they are and it's really frustrating how are they supposed to brand themselves if they keep changing their name every tournament or every match or something it, it gets it, it's it's really it's a really stupid idea it's not very smart at all by the players so if they're interested in branding themselves if they don't give a shit whatever they're playing to play i understand their points so um emc is going to be the radiant team and the dire is um panza captained by kuroki he is currently under the handle uh izanagi which i think is from naruto i'm pretty sure um he was Tornado Tony 79 a couple weeks ago, and uh, before that, Kuro uh, Kurokai or Kuro or Kuroki. I'm just going to call him Kuro, because um, he said in an interview once people should call him that. But the bands are going to be an anti-mage with a nature's profit and a lich. Now, there's going to be a lot of more games a lot more games coming out today, guys. Um, it looks like we have the semifinals of the Gosu Cup match is in an hour and 42 minutes, so we'll be casting that as well. That should be really, really sweet. I believe that's a best of three pretty sure so I guess I'm gonna miss the final the defense game let me check join Dota here it is prob question mark versus GDT so I don't really know who those players are anyway so not a huge deal I don't feel like I'm gonna miss out on a whole ton and the first pick is going to be a Night Stalker coming out of Tornado Tony 79, am I surprised? Hell no, I'm not. Man, I just realized, man, Batrider's been in the pool this entire time and nobody has banned or picked him all morning. I completely forgot about that. I cannot believe that. That's that's really surprising. Batrider did not fit into one single lineup here. Not very typical. Uh, Vengeful Spirit will be picked up by EMC and a Windrunner here. Windrunner is generally picked up semi-often against a Night Stalker because you do need to disable him to pick him off. And uh, Shackle Shot is a really good way to do that. That's for damn sure. Ancient Apparition picked up as well as a Priestess of the Moon um, that is going to round out their lineup very nicely with a lot of very, very good heroes, especially the Ancient Apparition, and Murano is going to give them a very strong sideline solo and some semi-carry potential later in the game. One more pick left for EMC before they move into the uh, second round bans. If you guys want to talk about the game, hop on to webchat.quakenet.org and join the channel gg.dotacast. And you guys can talk with other viewers about uh, how everything's going, so. Lots of people in the chat right now, actually. Still one more pick to go down to. 80 seconds here for EMC before they are moving on to the second round. We'll see if they go for a solo hero. Um, Beastmaster's still in the pool. We may see a Beastmaster pick. Beastmaster does get laned against Night Stalker semi-regularly, and the Disable can be very nice. Roar is just such a versatile and great ability. And I called it, man. Beastmaster is going to be the pick for EMC here. That is who they will be playing. Drow Ranger will be banned by the Dire Team. Kind of interesting. Um, Drow against a Night Stalker? I mean, it works pretty good. The slow arrows would be pretty helpful towards uh, picking him off, but kind of curious about that. Um, Kuro did go for that Night Stalker. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, the Drow Ranger ban. I don't know. It's kind of, kind of interesting. Um, Spectre is arguably a harder carry, but he's a little bit easier... I don't know. Uh, it's unusual. I don't necessarily understand it completely, but probably ban maybe... Yeah, they probably ban the Draw Ranger because they already have the Venge Beastmaster. Similar to what we saw last game was basically the triple aura. The Venge Beastmaster and Draw Ranger aura just gave him a huge damage bonus, basically. 
Leaf is going to dis disconnect and reconnect. One more ban to come here. Will they ban out a hard carry? We will see. Uh, they're still missing some support heroes, so they could also ban those. But I'm not quite sure what they're going to go for here. I'm going to guess a support hero. Maybe like an Earthshaker or a Tidehunter. Unless they themselves are interested in that pickup. They already have their solo heroes, basically. Unless they try lane the Priest of the Moon, which is not unusual. Ten seconds remaining. But we will be seeing Tornado Tony play his uh, very high-skilled Night Stalker. Puck will be their ban. Um, not a bad decision either, but um, kind of a weird... I don't completely understand this. Puck, it does get picked up regularly to counter as a uh, against a Night Stalker, and a Priest of the Moon works very good against both those heroes because they have getaway maneuvers. The the Night Stalker Aiden. obviously is just ridiculously fast. The Priest of the Moon can leap, and Puck's ulti is just really good for holding heroes in place, of course. So Weaver will be the last ban out of EMC, so we will not be seeing a Weaver this game. Remaining. Ten seconds left to go. Five seconds remaining. And they're back down to the bonus time. Sixty seconds left, appropriately, uh, approximately. Sorry, um, they're gonna have to pick up a sport hero. Uh, most definitely, I expect them to pick up a sport hero right now. I think that would be most understandable. But I don't know, man. I already feel like their picks are up against the wall. Um, Tornado Tony has excellent picking. Night Stalker, AA, Priest Moon, Crystal Maiden, just going to be rocking that aura. Everybody's going to have extra mana. And who will the last hero be? Who knows? Could be a lot of people. Twenty-three seconds left before they have to commit here. Go for a support hero, man. Just do it. Can I call it again? I called Beastmaster. Um, Witch Doctor, Tide Hunter, Enigma. Alright, Enigma was on the back of my mind, but I didn't say it. So, don't get to claim that one. An interesting picks. Um, very, stri uh, very strong tri lane picked up for uh, Panza. It's going to be a Tide Hunter Crystal Maiden with a Priest of Moon. We're going to see um, Night Stalker solo the Dare Top and A mid. That's what I expect. Unless they put A Top, which is also possible. Um, then it would be an A versus an Enigma, which wouldn't be too bad for Enigma. And not too bad for A either, except he could take a little bit of harass. It's hard to say. Um, but I do expect Night Stalker to probably be mid. And uh, the lanes... Actually, Enigma might be in the jungle, actually. Since they do have Windrunner Beastmaster as well, he's not going to be soloing. Windrunner's probably going to solo the top lane against A or Night Stalker. Beastmaster's probably going to be mid. And uh, it's going to be Venge plus another hero on the bot lane. Probably going to be a hard carry. I expect them to pick up and I don't know. And it's going to be a Broodmother, so very weird lanes here. So many solo heroes. Broodmother's going to solo the top. Windrunner going to probably solo with support from Venge. Enigma's going to be in the jungle and a Beastmaster mid. I, it's weird stuff. Kind of weird picking that EMC forced themselves into here. The lanes are much easier to predict for the Dire team. Neither team wanted to pick a hard carry because Night Stalker was going to be able to dominate, basically. But even still, not going to be an easy one by any means for EMC here. I think it's going to be a really fun game to watch. And we will go over the hero picks. Um, needless to say, Join Dodo is getting a little upset about the name things, and I think they're absolutely correct here. Prepare Needs to change. Uh, Region is going to be playing Beastmaster, Fishbone playing the Enigma, Forbidden Mini playing the Ventral Spirit, Wagamama playing the Broodmother, and finally, whoever Windrunner is. Dunno. I don't know if he's. Mad at the Windrunner or what? Not quite sure. For the Dire team here, Alex is going to be playing the Crystal Maiden. Leaf is going to be playing the Mirana, very good player. Izanagi, um, also known as Tornado Tony 7. Was he really not playing the hero? Are you kidding me? No way. Tornado Tony 79 not playing Ancient Apper or not playing Night Stalker. I don't believe it. What is what is a Night Stalker without Tornado Tony at the reins, man? Alright, looks like Azen is going to be playing the Night Stalker. RMN is going to be playing the support role on the Tidehunter. And uh, he will be playing the Ancient Apparition. Did he change his name? He did enter dot god mode, and that is what the periods are. 
EGM is one of his other names apparently, but it's apparently not his roster sign-up name. Did hear a word that was an Enigma word here on the high ground that's going to help protect the, the solo mid hero who is going to be a Beastmaster. Going to prevent him from getting ganked. Actually, the Trilane's on the top lane. It's going to be surprisingly Night Stalker, Crystal Maiden, and a Tidehunter. So his name is Enter God Mode here. Apparently. Leaf on the bot lane, and that's going to be against a Broodmiller, so uh, Priest of Moon could get ganked very heavily here. Doesn't seem to have any wards up or anything. He Eventual Spear will pick up the invis. They may go on the A, but it's going to take an extra person to gank this. Um, they did have this ward up, actually. I missed that one. That was blocked by the Enigma at the time. And will we get the disables off? I assume Ancient Apparition was aware of that fact. But even then, Beastmaster doesn't have a stun, so... There's a first hit, there's another hit, there's another hit. And are we even going to get access? Yeah, Beastmaster just can't contribute at all. Um... He's just not a very good hero to uh, gank on. But it looks like it may be Venge Beastmaster against that Ancient Apparition. I think that would be pretty pretty good lane here. Going to shut down the Ancient Apparition in a lot of ways. And Broodmother going to be absolutely fine here, soloing against the Priest of the Moon. Going for a fast Wraith Band. Somebody purchased her a Salva, looks like. Probably looks like that was Tied, maybe. He did get some more regen towards him. He's actually stacking a couple times here. Um, not really sure why he pulled these to the right right now. Just taking a lot of damage as a result. And he's trying to pull them to the creep wave. Will he get there in time? A little bit of a mistake there. Does he miss it? Wow. Only pulls one hero. Big mistake there by our man. I'm not sh sure why he uh, how he screwed that up so bad. Why did he pull them to the right? I'm not quite sure. Wasn't going to produce the stack, so. And once again, it is Venge Beastmaster versus the A, so that's going to allow Beastmaster to more or less get a lot of free farm. And yeah, he's actually getting pretty good CS so far. Are we going to see a stun? Not going to happen. Could have maybe stunned on the A there, but uh, still no follow-up from the Beastmaster, so understandable. Broodmother up to level 3 here. Uh, Mirana as well getting about up to level 3. Just about almost there. And Vengeful Spirit going for some rune control. Going to immediately camp on the top rune. It's actually going to be a bot rune though. And it will be an illusion rune. I think Enigma is going to pick this up very happily. This is actually going to help him out a crap load in his jungling. His Eidolon still sitting there a little unused, but not a big deal, man. In case he didn't have enough uh, things that look like himself, he has a few more now. And Windrunner probably has zero EXP here. They're going to constantly pull and stack here to uh, basically get a lot of um, creeps creeps killed. It's the best thing that stacking can accomplish. Burn Crystal Maiden, wow. Why is Crystal Maiden solo? What the hell? Windrunner has literally zero points of experience, and Crystal Maiden was out of HP. I don't know, just tanking creeps, I guess? Something weird like that. Maybe tanking creeps so that the creep wave would be controlled, basically. See, this way, if the creeps push into the tower... They'll die fast, and then the wave will immediately push back out. Now, they do have control of the push here, or the pulling, but even still, kind of peculiar. Windrunner about to finally hit level 1, or level 2, but not going to happen. There's the there's the ice. Here comes the AoE any second here. He's going to keep trading hits. He's actually not going to drop the AoE there. Pretty low on mana, so I guess it's understandable. He's going to pop his clarity potion and heal back up. Mariana level 4. Beastmaster, I'm sorry, Broodmother's still level 4 as well, and the Beastmaster Venge lane continues, but unfortunately they're both at level 3 here, so uh, Ancient Apparition is going to get a level advantage as a result of this. He's going to eat up a Tango. Our man almost about to hit level 3. Night Stalker level 4 here, getting a lot of solo EXP as a result of Tidehunter doing that stack pull there. And Crystal Maiden is actually swinging all the way around here. They may be able to get a kill as a result. Did we see Vision? I don't know. I don't believe he did, and I missed the first blow on the bottom. It's going to be on a Priest of the Moon. Enigma getting a gank off using the level 2 Malefice and some uh, some Eidolons there. Very nicely done. And here comes the gank on the window, and this is the one I was waiting for. Still no disables. Looks like they used everything in the Anchor Smash. I'm sorry, the, the last hit. It was like an Anchor Smash attack that ended up getting the window on there. Very nicely done by them as well. That's why I missed the first blood, guys, because I was waiting for that one, right? That is really why, though, seriously. <laughs> so Broodmother soul in against Priest of the Moon. This isn't a very good lane for Priest of the Moon, in my opinion. Broodmother has the regen from the nets. Um, he can slap around attacks. He can pick up that spawn spiderlings. And actually picking up level 6 is going to get 3 levels of spin web here. It's going to boost up his movement speed by an extra 10%. We actually have a ping here. Got a spot on the Vengeful Spirit. There's a stun by Venge. And will this be enough? I think Night Stalker's in a lot of trouble here. There's the Axis and the easy pickup. Just a little bit of orb walking there by Windrunner. Night Stalker gets picked off in a situation where he really didn't need to die at all. Went to go buy some items from the secret shop. And uh, that's going to result in him dying there. Not 
didn't use up the uh, use the courier apparently was more concerned with just going for it. I guess they were pretty deep. They were like right here. I guess he just decided to swing this way instead of past the tower. So but that, that ended up getting him killed. He did have pretty high HP. He could have definitely dove past the tower. Eventual spirit back in the lane. Completely out of mana though. It's going to be a little bit of an issue. If uh, Kuro does end up checking this out, he's going to have absolutely no fear of this lane. I believe we're out of bottle. No, actually we have a full bottle charge on Beastmaster. And Spider was uh, recorded or seen going a little top. That's a little peculiar. Broodmothers almost never roam like that. Um, especially because they're quite slow. Yeah, the movement speed of Broodmother is extremely low right now. It did get recently buffed, but that's because the web speed is uh, pretty high. He will continue CSing here. He's going to trade hits with that Priest of the Moon. He did have uh, Power Treads picked up. And the boar is back out on the map. Just a level 2 beast. Looks like he's going for axes over, uh, over pets. Tidehunter chasing. There's a little bit of power shot, but actually a little bit of a miss there. Did a little bit less damage than he was hoping for. Tidehunter now level 4. Going to do a little bit of anchor smash. And it is nighttime. Night Stalker will go for the dive. Here comes the slow. Wow, still not casting, man. They're just like trying to scare her away without having to commit. They really want to just take the tower here, and they th I think they're going to be successful. Crystal Maiden in a weird spot, though. Wow, takes tower damage randomly. Has to end up running into the Venge Windrunner combo, and will he continue diving this? I think he's going to go for it. We're going to see another stun in three seconds. He's going to get the Void off first. Will he get the Silence as well? It's not going to happen. I think Venge will die for sure, and actually Gush almost jacking that kill there. Night Stalker picking off the last hit, though. Tower drops on the bright side. And Night Stalker with his Ring of Hell Stealth Shield is going to go for a really fast Vanguard here, not opting for that solo uh, urn. There's the Cold Feet. A little slow on the combo, but um, ends up working out. And there's another kill on the bot lane. It's going to be on Mirana. Black Hole is used effectively by the Enigma with follow ups from Broodmother. Broodmother, and that level 7, still has not picked up his ulti. He's just not concerned about getting the skill. Much more worried about Hive movement speed and uh, big spawn Spiderlings. Night Stalker swinging past the mid lane. He needs to get that Vanguard up. His HP levels are just very, very low right now. And Ancient Apparition checking for runes, but it looks like they have been taken. Enigma with that Soul Ring. So many neutrals and creeps. I mean, so many creeps. Mirana may Starfall this. Actually, a lot of those spiders do not get hit, which is pretty big. That would have been a lot of gold. Nice control there by the Broodmother. Now he's got to be very careful. Enigma can get a Malefice off. Uh, Broodmother does not have any mana pool, though. No Soul Ring yet for him. And his Starfall is ready to go. He just needs to hop on in there, but he does not have a leap, so he has to be very careful here. I don't know if he's aware that there's no Soul Ring on Broodmother or no mana. And I think this first tower is going to fall here. Yeah, the Radiant team will get the kill. It's going to be Enigma picking it off. Very nice last, last hitting frame, and he's up to Dire Eidolons. Actually not leveling up Malefice first. The two stun seems to be enough. And Crystal Maiden checking bot rune. It's about 8 seconds here. Ancient Apparition really needs to pick up a rune here to get uh, a little bit of lane control. And Crystal Maiden will camp it out, and it's going to be bottom. Beastmaster, I'm sorry, Ancient Apparition picking up the wrong direction. Mirana using her regen rune. She really like burn. Oh, those are men. There it is. Wait, I'm confused. Um, so I heard a regen popped. I'm sorry. Yeah, regen. But then when I checked Mirana, her bottle of thought was empty. I'm confused. But there's the haste rune on the Ancient Apparition. He's gonna save this until he's ready to go for a team fight. Couple Dire Heroes on the top lane. It's going to be Tide Hunter up there again. With that Night Stalker and Tide, it's just about to hit level 6. That's going to make a big difference. Still no new HP yet on the Night Stalker, nor Treads. He does have the Wand at least. Priest of Moon coming back to try to stop little CS. But Broodmother's last hitting power and attack speed is just really good right now. Still no passive or ultimate out of the Broodmother. And here come the Radiant team looking for a kill. Still no Wave of Terror on Ventral Spirit. Not very typical here. And here comes the Chase. There's the spawn spiderlings. It looks like he did dodge that. And no stun from the Vengeful Spear, so a very, very good escape there by Mirana. Picking up boots and a Wraith Band here. As well as a Magic Wand. I don't know if that was completed or not. Still no haste use usage out of uh, Tornado Tony here. Just really holding it out as long as possible. Waiting for those kill opportunities. And Tide finally going to do another double pull. And this is going to get him to 6. Pretty much guaranteed. He's actually got a Chainmail already he's probably going for a really fast medallion and that's actually a really cool build that i've never thought of before i mean tidehunter has basically i mean he's got pretty good strength gain since he is a strength hero his gush minus his armor his anchor smash does more damage 
because it's physical. So if there's no armor, your anchor smashes us more. So then you stack up the old gush plus the medallion. Very cool stuff. And it gives him a little bit of mana regen. So as a result, he's going to have an item very similar to an urn. But uh, that's going to contribute pretty good in the mid game. And the early game as well, of course. And he won't be any squishier as a result because he does have the medallion, which also gives you the six armor. So I think that's really, really cool there. It's going to give him a lot more damage contribution in teamfights. There's a shackle shot. It's going to land on A. She's, he's in a lot of trouble there, but on, luckily it's just a level one shackle. There's the roar as well, but he got a little movement speed and tied immediately. Ults in. That's going to be it for Beastmaster. Perfect ulti from the Ancient Apparition going after the Windrunner now. And wow, look at that. Tidehunter just able to tank it up. There's another disable on Vengeful Spear. We need one more still from Nightstalker, but there's no trees anywhere. And almost getting the kill. But here comes a pause. Windrunner disconnects. Come, come on. Unless Windrunner's buying back here. Looks like his computer crashed. Okay. Alright guys, and now we get to uh, Vengeful Spirit gets to like think about how fast he's gonna die and if he can purchase any items from the secret shop or from the shop before he dies. Yeah, don't do it in fights. That was that was kind of unre that was kind of uh, unreasonable in my opinion. Especially because he's already dead. He's dead for twenty seconds here, and they pause the game. I, I think that's a little Now, Windrunner did kind of do a little auto-attacking. I mean, she was pretty screwed, so maybe... Kind of curious why uh, Fishbone and I saying that. He is kind of in a position for a, uh, a team fight. Arrow keys do not work. He is up to Tread Soaring, just about to get his Blink Dagger. Let's check the CS totals. The only thing I hate about this is you can't see. I really wish they'd scroll this down a little bit. That way you could see chat and deaths and things while you had bars up. It's kind of another issue that I should probably report. Not a huge gold advantage, but here are the kill deaths. Uh, two kills on Enigma, one assist. 49 CS on him. He actually has cooldown. Oh, he's out of mana, that's why. Broodmother's still on the bottom. He's going actually for a fast Vanguard here. Pretty cool stuff. It's going to keep him very survivable. It's going to be hard to gank him as a result. Now, Venge is guaranteed to die for sure. As soon as the stun wears off, it's going to be lobbing that void at him immediately. Um, Alright, so 54 CS on Broodmother, 49 on Enigma, and there we go. Game gets resumed. Uh, Windrunner connected. Mirana resumes it. Tidehunter gets the kill, surprisingly. Using the rest of his mana there, he's up to 900 gold, which is very high for a support tide hunter. You don't, you almost never see tide hunters with good items. They almost kind of like really sacrifice themselves for the greater good. And uh, the TP scroll really made a big difference. That ulti from tide just really swung it in their favor. Three levels of hunter in the night now. Still has not picked up his ulti for good reason. Doesn't uh, necessarily want to give up his nighttime viability just for that ulti. Greater Hawk scouting on the high ground. A ulti is coming for the Windrunner. It's not going to cause anything though. Nice Stalker going in. He's going to be a little bit late. The A ulti is going to land and there's the slow and the fear. Will he be able to get a kill? It's going to be close here. He just needs one more void but he's going to have cooldown. If she can get a shackle, wow! Picks her off. I didn't think she was going to get her He was going to get her with that one hit. I thought it was going to take at least one more hit after that. And he ends up getting a really good attack off. And a uh, very good team fight there. There's a cold feet on the Beastmaster. Mid tower will fall. Another destroy for Enigma. He's actually going for a mechanism. He has the gold now. Mechanism will be purchased. A little bit of a engagement on the Priest of the Moon. She's going to drop the Starfall and leap away here. Be Broodmother will not pursue this. Getting pretty close to getting a kill though. He did pop that self. Understandably a little scared. Broodmother is just such a good solo hero. Our man in position. Does he have his medallion? He does have his medallion. Medallion wand. Dust of appearance. This is a very farm tide hunter guys. Believe it or not. They're going to be using this medallion to hopefully gank the spider reliably. And here comes the... Oh man, what had just happened? He just did a random anchor smash. Walked in a second, anchor smashed. And walked back out. Broodmother now scouting it out with the spiders. He does have vision. He knows that there are indeed some dust. 
and more attacks on the Broodmother. Is he really going to go for this? There's no way. There's the arrow. There's the Starfall. Here come the rest of the Radiant team. Spider's accomplishing virtually nothing. Windrunner back up the top lane, going for a fast Django here. Robe of the Magi with that Bracer. It's going to give him some decent HP. But Nightstalker is up there as well. He does have his Vanguard completed as soon as he buys that Vitality Booster. But it is daytime, so he's got a ways here. He doesn't even uh, have his ultimate yet, so kind of an interesting scenario for him. He's got to level up one more time. And there he goes, picks up his ulti. Now he can use that for any major team fights. Broodmother picks up the Vanguard. Tide and Mirana still in position. The fact that Tide's even down here with that dust is going to make Broodmother a little worrisome. There's the nice spawn Spiderlings. It's very smart. There's the dust as well. Arrow's actually going to miss. The Tide ulti goes down, and that's going to be it. They're not going to be able to get this kill off. Our men are a little over-exaggerating his initiation. Big black hole as well, but the spawn Spiderlings too much. The A ulti picks him off. Very, very well done with the A coordination. And Fishbone might be in some trouble. There's the Sun by Venge. Going to immediately turn on Crystal Maiden. And now Mirano's the one in trouble. There's the big shackle shot. Another Malefice as well. That is a level 3. That could be it for Leaf. I think indeed he's going to go down. He does get picked off. And kind of a weird team fight there. Um, nice Stalker did end up coming in here. He's going to fear on the Beastmaster so he does not get roared. But I think that's going to be it for him. He's getting slowed just enough. And there the roar finally comes after the swap. And indeed Nice Stalker will get picked off. Kind of a 1 by 1 mistake there by Panza. A on the mid lane still continuing to farm. He did contribute with his ulti to kill that Broodmother but... Even still, how far they committed, how far they tried to commit to that Broodmother was a little uh, astounding. Looks like he did end up buying back, or just respawning. I'm not sure if that was respawns or buybacks, but there's Tidehunter scouting out the Broodmother, taking some slows. He will continue to spam that spawn with Spiderlings. Tidehunter's HP isn't that high though, so he's he can't really just eat those endlessly. He's going to need something like a Vanguard before those become much less of an issue, or a Pipe, or a Hood. He's only at level 7 right now. He did use that soul ulti to try to kill the Broodmother, and it was just a little, just a little bit not enough. Broodmother immediately leaving his lane, going to hop onto these ancient creeps, I assume. And indeed, there's the net as well. Regeneration. Middle tower is under attack. Doing the little spider slaps. Somehow spiders are strong enough to take out golems, I guess. Guess their little fangs can pierce through rock. Slowly but surely some magical way. Two support heroes in position. Will they smoke up here? This ward about to drop. Vengeful Spear looks like she wants to do some counter warding. She does have some sentries. Or just ganking on the Broodmother. There's the mech on the Enigma. Vengeful Spear pretty farmed here with the uh, Urn of Shadows. And will Vengeful Spirit drop the ward? Yeah, Crystal Maiden in a lot of trouble. Wow. What a fast pickoff. Broodmiller just doing a really great job of picking off enemy heroes. Especially with that Vanguard now. He still has a Sol Ring to spam that mana. And here comes an arrow. Is it going to land? It's not going to land on the Venge. Broodmiller in a little bit of trouble here. Let's see how many spiders they can pick off. couple more pieces of gold, about 50 gold from that kill. Tide's still in position, he's got to smoke a deceit. The spider is still here, here comes the enigma as well. There's the Malphus. This could be bad for Tide, but he pops his ulti off very effectively. The arrow actually hits a random spider, not going to land on the Broodmother. And the A ulti lands as well. Are they going to be able to pick off a hero? Enigma goes down at least. Broodmother's still in Viz though. And a little bit of a misplay. Um, Tide not underestimating the hero potential there. Did not realize the Broodmother was there. He forgot to pop the dust as well. Another little bit of a mistake. We did see a sentry ward. No, no sentry ward. And Broodmother going to eat and earn. Possibly go for another kill here. There's the uh, spider web. Will he go after it? There's the roar. Nice leap from Irana. Dodges the spawn spiderlings. And pretty much nullifies the roar. And here comes the Night Stalker. Finally cleaning up. Making use of his Imba hero. Getting a kill off. Broodmother back to the top lane. Going to continue pushing here. Doing what he does best. Be annoying. Nightstalker swinging back up at the top lane, almost at a thousand gold. He's a little under farmed here. 
Um, Broodmother doing a little bit better than him. And if we look at the gold difference, we're actually at 7,500 in the Radiance Favor. Holy crap. That is really big. That is a huge advantage. They've just been farming so much better here. It's only one tower down in the Radiance Favor. Missing three of the Dyers. And we have Fast Force Staff farmed by Ancient Apparition. He may end up forcing out. Nope, just a level level 8 Ventral Spirit. That means you have to be pretty much within mail or attack range to be able to get that swap off. Turn to back on the bot lane, continuing his farm here. He's at 440 gold. We'll see what he gets next. Maybe something like an urn. But the power shot's actually going to shoot right through his hide. Once again, his HP is not quite high enough to be able to sustain that stuff. He does have a level of Kraken Shell, though. Not that that stops magic, of course. Double Wraith Ban on Mirana. She's a little worried. Um, Leaf going for the cheapest form of uh, contribution as possible. Greater Hawk gets picked off. Very nice swing. And the Radiant team now going to swing around. There's a Blink Dagger and Enigma, so he's going to be doing some Beast Black Holes here. He is level 12. And here comes the Dire team coming for the kill. Are they going to get the gush off? They gush on the Ventral Spear. Ventral Spear going to die. Will Enigma blink? He actually just doesn't even blink there. I'm kind of surprised. I thought for sure he was going to back up. Here comes the arrow. Oh, it lands on the Beastmaster. Beastmaster in worlds of hurt now. He will definitely go down. But the black hole comes through by the Enigma. It's not going to be enough, though. Beastmaster gets disabled. Are they going to kill him before the roar goes off? It is successful, but everybody took so much damage from that black hole. He is going to be able to survive with that uh, mechanism, surprisingly. Very, very good attempt here by Fishbone to keep, uh, to keep the team alive, but, I mean, Tide ends up dropping to the DD Windrunner. And Windrunner now going to pick off, I'm sorry, Enigma going to get another kill on the Crystal Maiden, all from the Greater Boar Scout. Very, very nicely done. Azen now jumping on the Broodmother. He switched lanes here, wants to push down the top two towers. He does have this quarterstaff maybe going for his uh, uh, Orchid of Malevolence. Night Stalker continuing to see us, little spider dudes. And here comes the gank on the the uh, Night Stalker. He's in a little bit of trouble here. If we don't get any slows off, holy crap! Broodmother didn't get any slow off. And that's the difference between getting a gank or not. They were just waiting for the roar, but here comes some support TPs. Who will it be? Tide Hunter. He's got his Aghanims. Or his ulti. Here it comes. Tide ulti getting to land. Doing a lot of damage. That could be it for Beastmaster. Needs one more hit. There is the uh, the wand. And nice swap. Wow, the swap catches the Beastmaster into the arrow. That is hilarious. Ventral Spirit stunning right before he dies. Now going after the Broodmother. Is there a dust? There's the dust pop. And Broodmother in a lot of trouble taking some attacks. He needs another slow. Anything. Five more second cooldown. Here comes the Enigma. Will this be enough? He doesn't have a black hole though. Priest Moon ultis. Here comes another arrow from Mirana. This could be what they need. Be wow, Enigma is playing so good, man. Just using that blink really effectively. Are we going to see an arrow finally? There's the power shot. Wow, and that is just... Dude, Fishbone is playing so good here. Time Hunter going to die. Gets shackled to the tree. And wow. Man, EMC Fishbone here playing so fantastic as his Enigma, staying alive so long, continuing to support the team, blinking and picking off weak support heroes, playing so good. I thought for sure that the Dire team was going to be able to pull out the win there, but um, they just did not quite have enough. I'm not sure where the Ancient Apparition was in that whole deal. Um, I believe he did ulti. Tide ulti was wonderful. Beastmaster got picked off by that arrow, and then there just wasn't enough uh, heal and regen on the Radiant, or on the Dire team, to be able to keep fighting there. A mech would have absolutely made a big difference, for sure. And now they're going to go for, try to take out two towers. Nice Stalker coming through. Will he drop the slow? He does. It's going on the Enigma. There's the A ulti as well. Will he blink it? Oh, he does barely blink out. Now going after the Broodmother. There is Dustin as well, and uh, Broodmother definitely going to die finally. Even Crystal Maiden will ulti this to no avail. It's going to get a little CS, though. Night Stalker TP in the mid lane, going to continue his CS. He's actually going after this Ventral Spirit. He wants to kill. There's the slow. He silences as well, but he's in a little bit of trouble. The arrow comes through. It's going to hit. Barely, kind of. 
I guess that counts as a hit there. And now uh, Night Stalker pursuing, but there is a Hasted Windrunner. It's going to be tough to catch up to her. How much is her duration? Yeah, she still has like 20 seconds left. going to be absolutely fine. Power shot. Going to barely let miss the Priest of the Moon. And Rexar really, really underfarmed here. Going for a uh, Necro 3 next. And how is that gold total doing? It's peaking, peaking down, man. Down to 10k. Uh, was that... Did I I could have swore that was at 15k at some point. I might be wrong. Maybe it was only at 5k. Here comes the arrow. Not going to find a target. Unlike the last arrow, which was lucky as crap. That was ridiculous. It was like the side of the arrow. Venge ran into it and then uh, got extremely stunned. It's like the tangent or whatever. Math terms. I don't suppose you guys like that stuff. All right, RMN swinging back. Windrunner getting really close to a sheep. This is the benefit of not having to get that mechanism since Enigma picked it up. And uh, using that early farm, opting just not to get the Django. Does somebody have a Django at least? Somebody's got to have a Django. It seems weird to get that close to a Django and just not buy the recipe. I mean, the 750 gold can really make a big difference considering it gives your team a permanent 5% movement speed and attack speed bonus. But at the same point, that's 750 gold closer to the Sheepstick. He will be taking some hits now. Night Stalker going for the chase. There's the slow, but I don't think he's going to commit to it. And no shackle shot on Night Stalker, so Night Stalker's going to be absolutely fine here. Beastmaster bottles up a regen rune. And point booster completed on Night Stalker. I really feel like he just didn't get quite the uh, early game advantage that we should have seen out of the Night Stalker. Ancient Apparition checking for the rune. This is the point where he realizes that his is probably gone. Once again, Night Stalker looking for opportunity. He does finally get shackled here. There's a gush on Night Stalker. This could be bad for uh, Beastmaster for sure. There's the anchor smash. There's the blocking. Are we going to see the ulti? Tide finally drops his ulti. It's going to result in Beastmaster dying. Venge as well going to take a big hit as well as that ulti from AA. But that was a really big black hole. The only disable they had was that arrow coming from the priest and Will it be enough to pick off Fishbone? He does Malefice. I think he's going to survive this. And Night Stalker goes down as well, man. The semi-carry potential is just a little too big on EMC here. I think they're going to pull out the win from pa on Ponza. They only have a 4 kill advantage, but they're still up by a crap load of towers here. A 6 or 7 kill, seven, 6 or 7k gold advantage. And there we go, Ancient Apparition trying to get shackled, but he does get 4 step back. He's just super underfarmed here. I really feel like Tornado Tony 79 is not performing nearly as well as he normally does here. Enigma gets his third tower of the game. Windrunner picking up that sheep stick that side of the vice, and they are going to go for the Roshan. Um, looks like who spent the mana? Not quite sure. Somebody disabled. Maybe it was an urn charge to disable the armor. There's the mech up. Windrunner using her ability to tank. And are they coming? Tidehunter is going to scout the spiders on the high ground. You will anchor smash those two. He's got power treads now, so his HP is higher. No ulti though, 69 seconds. And Girder Hawk can scout the high ground. And indeed, the Aegis drops. Windrunner picks it up since they don't really have a hard carry. Windrunner is the closest to that right now. Couple more misses. Still no new items on Ancient Apparition. He's up to 1200 gold now. Only 853 HP. Fishbone really been winning this game, though. Honestly, Fishbone playing this Enigma, man. He's been playing extremely well. Dropping down huge AoEs. Dropping off the Disables. They just don't really have a really reliable way to stop the Enigma once he black holes. I mean, you don't have anything instantaneous. You have a Cold Feet. You have either of Night Stalker's abilities, but he's most likely going to be in that black hole. You have a Tide ulti, but he's been using that primarily at the start of the team fights. He can't really save it um, until the point... Yeah, now they're in a lot of trouble. Black King, Bar, and Enigma. It's looking really, really bad for Ponza here. Fishbone's just been playing too good. I really like this item build. Just opting for Power Treads, Soul Ring, Black King, Bar, Blink Mech. It's, it's really fun. Blink on Enigma just gives you so many options, since you have so many good disables and so many useful abilities. I 
Nightstalker in the jungle trying to farm up that Aghanims. It's going to give them a little bit more likelihood of uh, not getting ganked. So for their sake, I hope they get that pretty soon here. Priest of the Moon continuing on some Ancients, going towards that uh, Manta style, almost getting to the ultimate or about 400 gold away. Windrunner looking for a Shackle shot. He's just going to shoot a Power Shot through. Will barely miss Ancient Apparition, who still doesn't have any new items. 1700 gold now, maybe he's just going to go for a Sheep Stick or something. But even still, it's looking rough, man. The Orchid is done for the Brood Mother. We do see the smoke from EMC. Who will they be hopping on? The Django finally completed. Tidehunter TPing back. The team is afraid. They know there's a lot of MIAs. Bottom tower is and all the heroes become visible again. They lose their chance for a kill. But they will be team fighting. What's their gold advantage before this starts? 15k gold advantage for EMC. If As long as they don't somehow drastically screw this up. I mean, it's going to be really hard for Ponza to pull out the win here. Tidehunter will be initiating. Juking out the uh, ulti. He still hasn't used it. Scared some of the team members back. Venge will be looking for a swap as well. She is level 12. Catching you here like Vengeful Spear could be the absolute end of the game. And wow, he's actually pretty far in there. His ulti absolutely misplaced there. A huge mistake there. Arrow comes through. And a couple more nukes on the Priest Moon. She does have her man to complete. That'll help out. Still have 30 seconds of cooldown for that AA ulti. He does use the Chilling Touch. Level 4 Chilling Touch here. 70 bonus damage per hit coming out of these heroes. And the tower is going to drop to pets. There's the silence on Nightstalker. And there's the Enigma Black Hole. He pops the BKB as well. Catches the Nightstalker. A gets picked off immediately. There's the roar after on the Nightstalker. Do we get buybacks? Nothing yet. I know A can buy back. Yeah, he did buy back. It's still going to be a really hard fight for them to win. There's the Ice Vortex. Eventual Spirit looking for a swap. There's the swap. There's the stun. A does force staff himself, but he's looking in a lot of trouble. The A or the title is going to make a big difference. The game lags, but we see a drop. Eventual Spirit goes down. Crystal Maiden ulti actually surprisingly doing good damage, but Tide drops. Now going on Broodmother. Will they get Broodmother pick off? They do actually get him. Enigma cleans up Crystal Maiden. And another? Is that a really. No, Ancient Air Person's still alive. I was like, did he buy back a second time? Not possible. And the Radiant team finally retreating, picking off a whole Rax and a ton of heroes. Four total heroes. Great black hole. And since Enigma does have that black king bar, they literally have no options for disabling that. No Vengeful Spirit and no Beastmaster. And that's part of the reason they picked up Enigma there. They already had Beaster, Beastmaster and they already had Vengeful Spirit. Those are like the two best ways by far to stop any Enigma, especially a black uh, Black King Bar Enigma from doing anything. I mean, there are a few other abilities that can disable a Black King Bar Enigma, but it is so rough. He is literally the kink in Ponza's play right now. There's nothing they're going to be able to do to disable that. So pretty much every game, assuming they can't just DPS down Enigma, which is unlikely considering his HP and his mechanism, they're going to be looking at at least one or two heroes getting Black Hold, and picking off the Ancient Apparition and the Night Soccer like that was absolutely excellent play by uh, Fishbone, just really, really MVP of this game so far, in my opinion. Tidehunter using that medallion to see us a little properly. Still extremely far behind here. Crystal made it not very far. Her ultimate actually did pretty good damage, despite the fact. And Priest Moon back on the top lane, continuing to farm, but it's going to be so hard to come back from this. Uh, what is the carry potential on EMC? They have that Brood Mother. He does have the Orchid. He's going to have a BKB soon. Does he have his axe yet? I don't believe so. And Windrunner, of course, with that Sheep Stick. Already doing really good damage. Going to probably go for another Int damage item next. Not quite sure. Uh, I would love to see a Force Staff, maybe something like that. Beastmaster up to his Necker level 1. He's actually going to have the money for his next two. 2,500 gold. The recipes are about 1250 apiece. And here we go. Purchase those recipes. Come on. Don't be like that, man. Two. You got this. Come on. Come on. What is he doing? There we go. Finally purchasing it. Not sure what was going on. Looks like the old bird is dead. A little bit of counter warding here. Um, it looks like this is a ward placed. 
big luck out by the Dire team. Yeah, big big luck out there. Um, they did some warding, they dropped the sentry, didn't find one, and then they warded where the sentry was. That's always really, really shitty as a uh, as a warder. Vengeance like, yeah, put down a good ward, and then all of a sudden they counter ward, and you're like, oh. But wow, Venge's farm. Phase boots, when you have phase boots on Venge, you know that you're in a big advantage. With the point booster as well, it's going to give her a lot of HP. Regen will be bottled. And we're going to see another push from EMC in a second here. Both towers on the top lane are gone, which is pretty good. But uh, it's still kind of like three whole other towers here. It's a big gold advantage difference. And still we're looking at a 15k disadvantage here for uh, for Panza. It's going to be really hard. There's initiation. Enigma can immediately blink onto that AA. There's the ulti. But is it going to be enough? He's not going to go invisible there. The Sheepstick, I believe, does stop that. And will we see a buyback from Kuro? I don't think so. Let me see if I can find his hero. Six. No buyback. He's down to 100 gold. He just bought a mechanism. And I think that's going to be it. They might just rack up the middle here. They have so many spawns, they might as well go for it. I think they're going to play the safe, though. They are going to go for those side lanes. Wind Runner using Focus Fire appropriately. There's the Glyph Pop. Wow, this Necro 3 units are, like, way big now. Holy crap. There's a stun on Crystal Maiden. Will Crystal Maiden ulti this? She doesn't have a lot of survivability. And she is gone for sure. No buyback from her. Two heroes down for the Dire team. And now they're fighting down... Even farther, Tide gets swapped and killed. Doesn't even get his ult off. And now Night Stalker may be in some trouble as well. There's the black hole. Big black hole. It's going to catch Mirana too. And that's it. Panza is done. They're going to good game it. I, I just know it. Give me five seconds here. And there's no way they're going to play it. There it is. There's the good game, guys. Panza losing the game here. Very, very well played by EMC. Panza was very close, but as soon as that Enigma got that triple kill on the top lane, I feel like that was the breaking point where they just really, really lost all chances of being able to pull out a win here. Um, Kuro just didn't get that farmed on the AA. He did ulti, but he just didn't gank very often. Not necessarily saying that he should have been doing that, but despite the fact that he was mostly solo a long time, he really didn't get that farm, so... Um, that's going to be it for the game, guys. Um, I think we do have a uh, Gosu Cup match shortly, sometime soon. Um, I'm going to see who's going to end up casting that. Hopefully, Charms or Gods can uh, come in and cast that for us. But if not, I will be here for you guys, and I will be ready to watch that content. It will be awesome. But until then, we have to watch Ponza lose the game. Another four staff from Ancient Apparition. Run away! EMC played a very good game, though. Definitely, definitely the case. And the Necros got significantly bigger here, which I think it looks good. Looks like they really need to do this guy. It doesn't look the same. Alright, so that's EMC pulling out the win here in the defense tournament, guys. Uh, that's just uh, one game from the group stage. Thank you for watching. My name is Purge. If you guys want to see more from me, go check out my YouTube channel. I'll show you some links right there. YouTube.com slash PurgeGamers. I post first-person commentary. Um, I also post uh, casts just like these, and uh, I'm working on some guide stuff as well. So thank you for watching, guys. Appreciate it, and I will see you guys later. If uh, if I'm not casting the Gosu Cup match, yeah, I think it's it's Gosu Cup match, Gosu Cup match or bust. Um, if I'm someone else is not casting that, I will be casting that. So don't go anywhere, guys. I'll give you some info in just a second as I find that out. Thanks for watching. Don't go anywhere.